Hello everyone, it's Steve with After Owners Club. So this is a picture showing uh, one of the problems with EV charging. So you, you come up to a charging station, you need to, you're on a road trip, you need to fill up, and they say that there is a charger available, and it you come there and it's basically full. Probably this charger in the middle is like the non-functional charger, or someone pulls in right in before you. At this point, you have no idea where these people are are in their charge. Are they going to come off of their charger in five minutes, in 30 minutes, in 40 minutes, in an hour? Who knows? Um, so we don't know when these people are going to get off their charger because people do not stay with their vehicle during the charging. They're probably out like getting a meal or doing something else because it takes a long time to charge these vehicles. I mean, the fast chargers can charge a decent amount of range in about 30 minutes, but people are just not going to stay with their car. And then you're stuck with having to wait here and there's no way of queuing or figuring out where you are in line for this thing. And um, you end up having to wait or find another charging station. Now, like this scenario is pretty common in gas stations. You know, it's very, very common to go to a gas station and it's pretty busy like this. And people just wait in line because it takes maybe two to five minutes at most to fill up your gas tank and everyone stays with their vehicle while they're charging. And so you just pull up behind and wait in line and you fill up your car. What what pe people really like that convenience. Now, this is a kind of an edge scenario because obviously for most people, the vast majority of their charging is going to be at home. And so you don't have to deal with this. And so you never you know, since our electric car, we never have to deal with this. It just gets charged in the garage every night. And so it's great not having to spend the extra five to 10 minutes to go out of your way to find a gas station that has a decent price, wait in line, fill up, pay, leave. Um, you don't have to do any of that. You just pull into your garage and, and, and fill up. But on road trips, this is going to be a reality. Um, and it would be nice to have charging that's fast. And there is a company called StoreDot that is saying that they are gonna they're developing battery technology that allows you to charge a hundred miles of range in five minutes, and that's for a regular car. And if you look at their calculator, this hundred mile range is uh, based on some pretty um, optimistic scenarios. They're they're claiming that a car is gonna have two hundred um, watt hours per mile. So if you look at this. Their, their assumption is that the EV efficiency, so like if you have a pack size of 30, is 190 watt hours per mile. That's pretty optimistic because there's currently no vehicle out there that gets that kind of um, uh, efficiency. I think uh, model Tesla Model 3 is about 300 watt hours per mile, and that is um, more likely. Now, Aptera is going to have 100 watt hours per mile, so it would be twice the um, efficiency. So you could get 200 miles of range on an Aptera with this technology in five minutes. And that would be great because then you could have a scenario like a gas station where people just stay with their vehicle and charge it up in five minutes and leave. And you know that if you come to a scenario uh, that looks like this, people, these people are gonna leave in about five minutes. Within five minutes, many of these cars are gonna leave. And so that's better. The reason I heard about this company is because I saw a couple of news articles. Polestar is going to use their uh, fast charging batteries. They're going to have a prototype out next year and they're hoping to have it um, on the road by 2027. So it's it's not like the, the sodium ion batteries which are like being produced right now and will be on sale early next year. Um, early this year rather. Um, and then Tesla is also looking at this. And these things have been validated by third party. So a third party tester has tested their batteries and see that they do indeed charge fast. Now, what's interesting is you see here, it says store dot. And then you see here, Eve technology. Now you guys remember Eve energy is signed an agreement with Aptera to um, supply batteries. Now these are pouch batteries, which are different than the batteries that um, Aptera is going to use. Aptera is going to use 21700 batteries for the, um, for the uh, 40 for the launch edition. And I don't know if the launch edition is going to use Eve energy cells or or not. There's also Formosa energy, which is a Taiwanese company that they're also in talks with. And then you heard about recently they signed a deal with um, 
a Korean company. And that Korean company looks like they're not making the cells, actually. They're going to do the, they're going to help them do the packaging and make the modules and the battery packs. So that's a kind of a different thing. But the cells are going to be manufactured by either Eve or for almost as long as, as far as we know. And they are talking to other battery um, suppliers at this point as well. But it's interesting that StoreDot has a relationship with Eve and Eve is um is making them so i think you can make this in a pouch form factor and a cylindrical cell form factor because if you look at their website i think they show um cylindrical cells on here okay i mean we went through there but uh i definitely did see it on there but they're they're showing uh, these pouch batteries at this point and then the other thing is fast charging tends to degrade batteries quicker and this same third party tested these and they cycled them uh, a thousand times doing this really fast five minute charging and it did not degrade their um, their battery capacity. So that's all good. Here's here's the agreement between StoreDot and Eve um, to do fast charging parties. So it's, it's these batteries are um, basically drop-in batteries. They, they're, they're um, you don't have to change the car too much. So it's conceivable that if they if Eve makes the cylindrical cells using this technology, that Aptera could get this technology at some point in the in in the future and have a really really fast charging Aptera for um, for road trips. Now Aptera obviously has the advantage of it's really not going to need to charge much uh, day to day. You can just charge it by the sun, but on road trips you're you're going to need to deal with this. Okay, now who are the partners that are looking? Uh, working with StoreDot. So StoreDot is, they have uh, about 15 automotive partners that have been talking to them, but the big ones are uh, Daim Daimler, uh, British Petroleum, VinFast, Volvo, Polestar. And remember, Vol Polestar is basically a, it's a joint venture between Volvo and Geely, which is a Chinese company. Ola Electric, Samsung, TDK, and uh, Eve Energy. And again, Eve Energy is one of the sources for Aptera's battery packs. Now, I kind of, I went through StoreDot's um, website and there is a lot of, you know, marketing jargon here, you know, fusing organic chemistry, nanotechnology and AI to maximize energy. That tells me absolutely nothing. So I kind of did some research and figured out what they're doing is they're basically doing a semi-solid state battery using a silicon anode. Okay, so let me explain to you what that means. Um, this is a standard lithium ion battery. So there's a cathode and then there's an anode and there's a separator and an electrolyte in there. So the cathode is what determines when we say lithium ion chemistry, you know, they're talking about NMC. So NMC cells uh, are what Aptera is going to be using. So that's nickel, manganese, cobalt. Uh, and there's like NCO batteries and NCA batteries, which are like nickel, cobalt, aluminum. Uh, nickel cobalt oxygen so there's all these different chemistries and they're all talking about the cathode chemistry almost all of these use a graphite anode and the way it works is when you're charging this thing the lithium ions go across the separator and they intercalate between the uh it, between the carbon in the graphite and that's how it works and this process is relatively slower than if you used a silicon um, electrolyte uh, silicon anode and silicon anodes actually predate graphite anodes and silicon anodes have more than 10 times the ion holding capacity so you can get a lot more energy dense battery with a silicon um, anode and so that's all good and you can charge faster with a silicon anode so it's better charging and better energy density so why don't we use silicon well the problem is is that with silicon when you when when graphite takes on lithium ions, it just intercalates between the structure and it doesn't change the shape of it or the size of it. When uh, silicon takes in the lithium ions, it actually forms an alloy and the material expands and you get this expansion and contraction with charge discharge and it causes cracks and it causes um, a lots of problems with the battery. And so the technological and the engineering problem that needs to be solved is how to deal or how to minimize this uh, this expansion and contraction with charging and discharging. And so there's various methods. You can put in void space, put a shell. You can use a graphene to, to make a matrix on it. They use um, like 
uh, nano wires and things like that. So there's lots of different companies using different strategies to do this. And one of the major companies is this company called Group 14. They're based out of California. Oh, no, they're based out of Washington, I think. Yeah, Woodenville, Washington. And they've developed this material called uh, SCC-55, which is a, they use a matrix of graphite and put about 50% silicon in there. Now, a lot of the graphite anodes used today, like, like in Tesla and things like that, they have about 5% silicon because even just adding a little bit of silicon increases the uh, battery capacity um, and the energy density and its charge rate, the its ability to take more charge. But they 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 want, currently these companies are wanting like 50-50. And, and when you get to that high level of silicon, you have to deal with this um, physical expansion and contraction. So they've developed this, um, this kind of composite material and it looks like Storedot is actually using this material and just optimizing it to do their technology. And Storedot is just the one that's been the first one to um, announce that a, com a car company is gonna use their batteries. But there's several other companies. There is this company called Innovix. They also are working in silicon technology. And there's a company called Scylla Nanotechnology and this company already has a silicon anode battery out on the market commercially. It's in the Whoop. If you, you guys may have heard of it, it's a it's called it's a fitness tracker called the Whoop. And um, it made it a lot more energy dense. And the it's like a little watch, basically. And um, that's been out on the market for at least a year or two. And they're trying they're trying to get it into cars. And I think they have a relationship with Mercedes. And Mercedes gonna, is going to use their silicon anode battery, which is also fast charging and also more energy dense to do that. And this is and the last company, major company is a company called Amprius. This is also a California based company and they're working with silicon anode batteries. So sil these silicon anode batteries are kind of um, are, are semi solid state batteries and they're kind of like the step before solid state batteries, solid state batteries. Um, I haven't heard that there's any um, hitting the market right now, but they're com they're coming down the pipeline. Like Toyota's announced that they have one and that they're manufacturing one and they're going to put them in their cars. And there's several companies like Solid Power and several other companies that are using solid state batteries. And maybe we'll talk about that a little bit later. But this is looks like it's coming on the market pretty soon in the next two years or so. And so that'll be really good because it can get rid of this problem where you're having to wait um, a long time for an undisclosed amount of time to um, charge your car, which would be annoying. And you can kind of just fill up and be on your way quickly. And it doesn't seem to affect um, battery capacity or battery life, which is good. So there's a lot of new changes in battery technology. You know, we talked about sodium ion batteries, which I think are gonna come online. The other good thing about these having these silicon anodes is silicon is extremely common you know just it's in sand um and you can find it anywhere graphite anodes right now i think over 90 percent of the graphite anodes are processed in china and made in china at this point so the whole um, lithium ion battery infrastructure is dependent on a on, on a chinese um, supply chain to get the um, graphite anodes and so having another anode um, like silicon is is better for kind of um, having some redundancy in the supply chain um, in case there's some issues with uh, getting um, stuff out of China. So silicon is a better, it's a more energy dense, takes on charge better. And um, as, as soon as they figure out the engineering problems, which looks like a lot of companies have figured it out in the lab, they just need it to scale to production. And so the big ones to watch are Innovix, Scylla or Scylla, and Amprius, and then this this startup called Storedot. Now, which I thought was interesting, um, just as an aside for the Storedot, I looked up their Wikipedia article, and it looks like this company's been around since 2012, so 11 years, and soon to be uh, probably 12 years. And they've been saying that they they're going to have a um, an electric car battery that charges in five minutes by 2020, and now it's 2024 and they still don't have one, but they're getting closer, which kind of just goes to show you. And, you know, back, uh, if you go back to their website, I try to go back in the Wayback Machine and see it for myself, but people have said, 
that in 2000, like 15, 2016, they said the five minute battery was here, that it was available. And obviously seven years later, still not available commercially. So these startup companies, the, none of them hit their, um, none of them hit their timelines, but it's slowly getting there. And um, it looks like 2024, like they've, they've now had their technology validated by a third party. It does work. It is being manufactured. And now it's kind of getting into like, like uh, Polestar is going to put it into their vehicles and they're going to test it out next year and they're going to release it maybe the year after that. All right. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully that was interesting to you. Um, have a great day.